WUSA is on the air tonight. The power at the charge. Tonight, two of the league's most explosive offenses and two of its biggest stars go head-to-head. -head. Speedy Tiffany Milton leads the WUSA with 23 points in 12 games, but New York has seen a power outing with only two wins and six straight losses. June's Player of the Month, Marinette Pichon, is the league's top goal scorer. With six tallies in her last five games, she has kept the charge unbeaten in its last seven. Power versus charge here next. Women's professional soccer have turned out in numbers tonight. Here on Philadelphia's main line, the campus of Villanova University, where Philadelphia Charge calls their home. They take on the New York Power tonight. Hello, everyone. I'm Lou Tilly. I'll call the action for you tonight along with Jim Harrison. And Jim, two teams going in different directions right now with distinctly different motivations and points of view as we go in tonight. Well, right now, the Philadelphia Charge are thinking about playoff positioning with nine games left in their season. By contrast, the New York Power are struggling and they're looking to come back. Right? Carolina is in first place. Philadelphia with two games in hand and New York 2-10-1 in last place. WUSA standings brought to you by Terra Chips. Two of the most exciting players in the league tonight, Jimmy. And every time we've gotten to see the New York Power, you can't help but admire and enjoy the play of Tiffany Milbrit. Tiffany Milbrit out of Portland, Oregon. She'll be wearing number 15. There she is leading with 23 points. She's the only player in the league to score a hat trick this year. There she is in action. She has tremendous speed and the ability to finish. Quick on a turn. Watch her smack this with her left foot. She was a 2001 MVP Offensive Player of the Year for the WSA. Philly is coming to the Millennium as the best pure finisher in the world. Watch out. She's explosive on the counterattack. For Philadelphia, they've suffered the loss of one of their best players in Kelly Smith. But look, taking her place more than ably is Marinette Pichon, the June Player of the Month. Pichon will be wearing number 11 out of France. Check out this diving header nutmeg goal at the far post against Atlanta against Curry. Marinette just named the player of the month in June. Has knocked in six goals in five games. Pichon is a stealth bomber. She's elusive. Opposing teams have trouble shutting her down. Pichon and the charge may be the hottest thing going right now in women's professional soccer. These are the hottest thing going for the kids. The Powerpuff Girls are here tonight. A powerful game coming your way. Stay tuned. As women, we lead a dozen lives, but sometimes we need a break from them. Now we've got it. Introducing WE, Women's Entertainment, a new television network for women. Movies with our favorite stars. She'll love it. And original shows that celebrate all the things we are. WE, Women's Entertainment, experience all we have to offer. Watch it on Time Warner Cable and Cablevision. dollar pants. Pay 20. Saw it at the mall for 100. Got it yesterday for 50. Only 70 dollars. Earrings. 14 carats. 25 dollars. Savings worth talking about. TJ Maxx. You should go. Alain Hurley owns a Hyundai Elantra. I researched it on the internet. There was no comparison. The competition can't match the freedom of America's best warranty. The warranty for the Elantra was the best out there. It also has a long list of features, including front and side airbags. It's the only car in its class that has them standard. The gas mileage is excellent. It's a great value for the money. The Hyundai Elantra at just $12,549. It's a solid value. Freedom is calling you. Get $750 cash back or 0.9% financing during our Hyundai summer sell-down. The New York Power psyched about this season, spending time with our fans and showing the world how soccer is really played. They had this thing called the Power Zone, where you can play games, listen to cool music, and win stuff. I stayed after every game last season, and I got all the players' autographs. Come out and cheer the Power to a championship. We'll be there, will you? Are you ready for an historic business move? Connecticut offers hundreds of business sites primed for high-tech use, with transportation and communication infrastructures already in place. The best part? 
These sites provide revolutionary workspace that's been delivering historic business opportunities since, well, the revolution. Call the Connecticut Brownfields Redevelopment Authority today. We have the upfront financing to help make your next business move historic. This game is brought to you by Penn Orthopedics. Penn Orthopedics keeps you in the game. By Hyundai, driving is believing. Where the freedom of America's best warranty, the Hyundai Advantage, is standard equipment. By AYSO, the American Youth Soccer Organization. AYSO, where everyone plays. And by WE, Women's Entertainment, the new cable network for women. Good family entertainment on display again on this Sunday evening in the Philadelphia region. There's Marinette Pichot, the June Player of the Week, and the leading goal scorer in the WUSA matched up against Tiffany Milbert, who leads the league in points total this year. Hello, everyone. Lou Tilly and Jim Harrison calling the action for you tonight. And here, uh, Optiman Online brings us the New York Power starters tonight and a change in goal, Jimmy. Uh, Weber steps in there, and of course, keep an eye on Emily Jans. When she scores, she takes an awful lot of pressure off of Milbert, second leading scorer on the team. The power coach uh, charged with turning this around, Charlie Ducilli taking over now. In just his second game. For Philadelphia tonight, their lineup brought to you by Penn Orthopedics. And Heather Mitz, always worth keeping an eye on her, this balanced back line of Philadelphia. Watch for Heather Mitz. She has three assists in a row. She's becoming consistent, finding open strikers up front. Mark Corian, the head coach of the Philadelphia Chargers, has been the surprise of the year in both years that the WUSA has been in existence. An excellent eye for the types of players he selects to play a system that has been very effective. And there's a, a young lady that he had a year ago, Saskia Weber, Jim. Weber's goal against average this year, 2.58. Winning percentage, 41.5. And Melissa Moore, the only keeper in the league, under 1.00 goals against 0.83 on the air for Melissa Moore. And Krikorian knew what he had in Moore when he let Saskia Weber go to the New York Power. Philadelphia will control. They're in the all red with some white trim. Moving left to right on your screen here in the first 45 minutes. New York men in the all white with the black trim and chasing just their second win of the year. That's a great ball out of the back from Teach in there. And it looks like the down taken down. They've broken the pressure. The power came right at them, tried to knock them off balance. So much of uh, Philadelphia's success uh, comes off of that back line, that four across that you see right now. We'll tell you more about that as we move along. We welcome you on Comcast Sportsnet and MSG all along the northeast corner to uh, the main line of Philadelphia, Villanova, PA, and on the campus of Villanova's Wildcats. We play on artificial turf, first year installed here in Philadelphia, and that is the charge on the move. Lee Hong leaving it right side. Connors with it now, number 12, and hooking it into the box for the first attack of the night. Yeah, Lee Hong with his sat shot out of a cannon there. Connors has to do a little bit better on the ball there. Lawler in the midfield stealing it. And to Milbert, and so much of it will work off of her in the middle of the league's leading scorer for the New York Power. Here are our officials tonight, Jennifer Bennett, Deanna Driggers, and Brenda Wright, an all-female team calling the action in the WUSA tonight. But right now, it looks like the Power trying to get out quicker, but just giving the ball up. Philadelphia has been all unbeatable literally on their home turf here at Villanova. They've yet to lose a match, and they've only lost once all season long with just nine games to go until we start the playoff season. And even though the pregame lineup looked like uh, New York will be playing a 4-3-3, looks like they're playing a 4-5-1 as well as Philadelphia. And New York desperate to get something going. Jen Teachin on the throw-in. Jen Benson, Heather Mitz, Erica Iverson, that's their back four. And that's Iverson with the ball coming off her first goal ever in the WUSA. And what a great pickup she was. Yeah, great goal that she scored last week. And uh, she was uh, put on waivers by New York, and it's kind of gone full circle for her. She stepped up, and now she's playing out of the back uh, right next to Tijin, central defender. More often than not, you'll find her on the ball uh, defensively. And here's Zhao Li Han coming off an assist last week, running with Pichon, a dangerous combo, hooks it in and off the backboards. So it'll be a uh, corner of Philadelphia. Zhao Li Hong is really tearing up that right, that left wing side and also centrally. She's really come on fire. And there's Lori Fair pretty much playing in the midfield tonight. And Saskia Weber played her soccer a year ago here with Philadelphia, but gave up more and more time to Melissa Moore as the season moved on. Now here's Fair hooking it in, low line drive. It was kind of mishit and off the near side. 
Don't kick then to the New York Power. And Toski Weber stepping in for Gal Hong, and uh, Weber has uh, started five games this year, and there's Lori Fair, uh, Ronnie Fair, excuse me, one of the twins. We'll talk a little more about uh, those two later on. First time they uh, played together for the U.S. national team was in 97 against England. The injury report brought to you by Novacare for New York. Well, and tearing her knee just last week, and Carvelson, Smith, and Tullis. Well, Smith and Carvelson already with surgery. Here's the break in for Connors with some room. And over the end line, she can't save it. It'll be a goal kick to New York. Nice move by Connors, but Welchel did well to angle her down there. And as you mentioned, Sarah Whalen, what a huge loss. Our uh, condolences go out to her. She, she's had a rough year. She's uh, the midfielder U.S. national team player for the power, punctured her ribs. And uh, also, uh, no, excuse me, broke her ribs, punctured her lung back, if I were, and then just blew out her knee last week. Wow. So that's a big loss for the power. And for Philadelphia, Kelly Smith, who was on an MV MVP pace, Jim, and yet Philadelphia has let to yet to lose a game in her absence. Yes, that, that was a big loss, and uh, she should be back by December. But yes, she scored possibly the goal of the game uh, this year, making one of her 60-yard runs. Zhao Li Hong, one of two Chinese nationals on this Philadelphia team, along with Lu Ai Ling, the veteran at 35 years, who has announced her retirement at the end of the season. She'll probably see action in the second half of tonight's game. There's McDowell with her first start, number 19, and that was Connors. McDowell uh, out of the UNC. There she is on the ball. And she's in the starting lineup tonight in place of Stacey Tullock, the rookie out of Arizona, number one draft choice, who tore up the knee last week. Not seriously enough, we don't think, for surgery. Right, and, and uh, sprained uh, MCL, and of course, McDowell's got to be careful. She's getting over a bruised uh, right knee herself. Nice move. There's McDowell with a little flip, and into the zone she goes. Lisa for Connor, hooks in front, just wide on the redirect was Monroe. Monroe from Long Island by way of West Islip and UConn and UCLA who scored uh, against the power last time. Getting in some very good timing and finally the charge gets the ball over. They've did, uh, done some very good wing play but you need to get that serve and here it comes. And uh, MFM Mary Francis, Francis Monroe almost getting on target. How about that play by McDowell though to break into the box? Nice ball. They popped it over the defender's head. Let's talk about there's a number of ways you don't want to get humiliated in soccer. That's that's one of them. That was on Welchel, number two on defense for New York, which has not done much offensively. And wisely there, Jen Benson plays it back with her head to her keeper, Melissa Bull. Goals against average of 0.84. The only goalie in the WUSA under one goal per game. Yeah, three shutouts on the air, and uh, it's having a tremendous year. And I was talking before about Gao Hong. Uh, she started the last game, but uh, seems to be struggling with her confidence a little bit. One of the better goalkeepers in the world, but uh, Saskia Weber gets the call this time, and she was in the goal the last time that the charge played it. Unfortunately for her, they took Keyshawn down for a penalty kick in the 88th minute. Which cost them the game, the only time the two teams have met this year. A 2-1 Philadelphia win early on in this season. Of course, last year, Milford scored four goals against the Philadelphia Charts. So uh, keep an eye on her. Very explosive, dynamite type of player. Emily Jans on the ball now. She can score in a hurry. Out there with Connors, number 12 for Philadelphia. That's that Philadelphia back line with the ball, and it's deflected by New York. It'll be a throw-in for Philadelphia. Attention all Girl Scouts. You want to sleep on the field with the pros play? Come on out to Villanova Stadium Saturday, July 20th. It's Scout Out 2002. In addition to camping out on the field, you get to watch a movie under the stars, play games, and even meet some of the team. For tickets, call 215-467-GO or visit PhiladelphiaCharge.com. A terrific website, by the way, to find out about it. 215-467-GO. Ben Benson on the ball as number six. One of the call-ups for the U.S. national team. We'll tell you about that a little bit later in our broadcast. Right now, Philadelphia playing very well, very good possession from side of the field uh, to the other. What's very important is they can, the power cannot allow Pichon to uh, break out of that uh, situation there from side to side in that uh, unpredictable through ball which she almost got onto. Yeah, they'll, they'll throw the long high ball to her, Jim, and let her break on it and use her exceptional speed if the team's seen her for the first time. It's deceptive, and speaking of which, coming the other way, but then recovering is the Philadelphia defense as New York had something going with Emily Jans out in front. Nash with the charge has to be careful. Uh, the power of the third best offensive team in the league right behind the charts at one point six two goals 
into the goal. And watch this defense here as James puts a great ball through there. And there's Anita Rapp and the Norwegian national team. But Teachin and Mitch combined to shut it down. Good closing speed, they would say, in football by... There's a takedown inside the box. Is there a penalty called here? Pichon was breaking in dangerously. Good question. And I, I again, uh, the referee's a lot closer than I am, but it's a long side. She got flattened. And it looked like Welko uh, ran her over from behind. And that draws a uh, Bronx cheer here in the Philadelphia region. There again, you can see she got the step on it. Clipped her heels right at the top of the box. So even if it was called, it wouldn't have been in the penalty area. Wrap out there chasing again. Has shown good hop in her step early in the going. Connors, number 12 for Philly. On the ball, taken away by Mildred, who is just a mighty might, exploding now. One on four, and then it's knocked away by Iverson. Well, here's where the charge had to be very careful. Just slowly but surely, there's a power getting into this game, and they are jumping the charge in their midfield third, and they're getting the ball right back. Yes, that was Jans again, trying to sneak through that back line. Here's McDowell up there, 19, up front for Philadelphia, running with Connors. Connors, they'll look for Pichon on the break in again and again. That's the matchup they're looking for there. They want Pichon to run at Welchel. As you see, Mariner Pichon and Weber doing some backup stuff there. But uh, Welchel, very good in the air, a central defender out of Duke University. But uh, Pichon uh, had a step on her. We saw it last week against Atlanta. Pichon with two of the Philly three goals and could have easily had four with a couple of breakaways. She is in incessant motion. Here's a great run. Mildred down the left side has a step. But Mitch closes well and closes it down. Tries a deep cross, and it's on the money for Orman, who knocks it on goal, and Moore can pick up the weak shot. A pretty decent counterattacking soccer there from the power. And it started with a, a two-woman, two-man to corner kick, and it was broken up at the top of the 18 and a one-time ball, right? to Milbert, and Milbert found Foreman on the other side, but it's a very good tracking by Mitz and company. Once again, the Philadelphia defense closed well and showed some raw speed. Connors would have gambled, but it's taken away by Fair, Ronnie Fair, number 17, identical twin sister to Lori. So Ronnie cut her hair. Right there with it now. The Petter intended for Milbert, but Keechan was there. And all around the ball there, played for the 95 U.S. national team. There she is, lefty. Mitz uh, tangling with Waller down just below us, uh, two number 13s. Throwing to New York, and there's Heather right on Waller. It's becoming a physical game rather quickly here. The power is going after every single thing they can. Any 50-50 ball, any... 70-30 ball they can get their goal for. Yeah, they are battling again. Mitz falls to the turf, and don't think she's just another pretty face. She plays rough and tumble soccer on this Philadelphia defensive line and has an assist in three consecutive games. Yeah, she's uh, just tangled up there with Rapp. You're going to see Anita Rapp there, number 10, plays for the Norwegian national team. Gave her a bit of the hip there. <laughs> so we play into the 12th minute. No score here in Philadelphia, and I'm sure if you're watching it in the New York region, you're experiencing what we have here in Philly. There's an ash covering here from the Flyers in Canada. And there's a tough play and a low overcast here. Almost a, uh, what would you call it, Jim? Almost like a fog here in the Philadelphia region. Yeah, it's uh, a bit strange there in that uh, kind of... Uh, hazy at the same hazy. Watch this ball knocked in here. And again, there's some good defending them from Benson. Benson. They'll get a corner kick out of that. Good closing speed again by the Philadelphia defense, but they're starting to get some angles to the goal, Jim. Well, I was going to say, they had four players pushed up on that long ball. So they're trying to match the back line. Lawler with the left foot looking uh, inside and a foul called as uh, Christy Welchel went up with a header. Yeah, Welchel, we talked about her, the big center back there, number two, getting up and winning that ball and knocking it down, becoming very dangerous. Watch the timing of her run there. She's in the center of your screen. She leaps up there and then knocks it down right through uh, the six yard box, which is pretty dangerous. Moore uh, starts to make a run at it and then started to lay it off. Now sends all of her defense forward and knocks it up near midfield, low line drive kick. Well, it seems right now any extra t any extra touches that the charge are taking, uh, they're being stripped of the ball. There's the break again for Pichon. You see it again and again. She is a road runner up there, number 11. And not just straight ahead, she is nonstop motion. 
and has two goals in her last game and now leads the WUSA with nine total on the season. Oh, and now the Philadelphia defense backed off and allowed Power the possession here and Fair coming forward. New York once again on the attack, a little something going. Dow lays it off. For Monroe. Zhao Li Hong, Chinese national player. And Mitz with the chip ahead and over everyone. This is a very interesting game right now. The Chargers playing pretty well out of pressure, but anytime anyone, that means Connors, especially in the right midfield, take an extra touch, they're being shut down. And that plays into the strategy of the New York Power. And again, you're going to see they have three or four players pushed up on their back four. They're trying to get over the top and in early. Well, Jimmy, New York underwent a coaching change. Is that a change in philosophy and strategy for their team? Well, they've had a lot of different looks this year. They played different different alignments with Coach Vasily said it's a player's game. He wants the players to play and dictate the game themselves. So we'll see what that means tonight. It seems like they have a little bit more freedom as to uh, playing with, with the ball on their own. Benson hooks it in, gets it there, and boy, Weber had to be clean with a pickup with Pichon on the doorstep. You saw the long ball chip in for Pichon, and here's a look at it again. Benson somehow gets this across the goal mount. Yeah, Benson overlapping forward there, and that was quite a dangerous ball. Another foot to the other side, and it would have been trouble. McDowell at uh, midfield. The 19 Philly. And Welchel with it now for New York. And there's a long ball down the right side. Yeah, they're putting, with that long ball, the charge are under a lot of pressure now for the power. Next Saturday, the Power back on their home field at Mitchell Athletic Complex on Long Island for the first of their two games in July. The Power's home games in July are Saturday, July 13 against Atlanta, and Saturday, July 20 versus Julie Fowley and the San Diego Spirit for tickets. one 8 6 6 power ticks. Come on, come on. And there's an opportunity for the Power. Fourteen. It's up and over the goal and over the end line by Wynn McIntosh. McIntosh scoring the... Uh, a week and a half ago against Carolina on a head ball. Her father played uh, profe uh, professional baseball for the Padres and the Astros. And of course, right now... Good athletic football. genetics. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, but, uh, the difference uh, between uh, Coach Pat Farmer and Charlie Gisilia, they, they, some, some of the tactics are similar, but what I noticed here, they're, they're playing direct as Pat Farmer did, but at times they're Putting the ball down on the ground and playing to people's feet and keeping some possession. So, looks like a good combination so far. Harry Francis Monroe knocked down from behind. Foul called against Jen Waller. So, Mitz will start the play for Philly. Connor forward and they can't handle it as Rebecca McDowell. So, it's New York ball on the throw in. 16th minute of play here from Philadelphia. Just outside of the boundary of the western side of Philadelphia. Philadelphia's main line in Villanova, PA. We're watching the WUSA, the New York Power, trying to get their third win of the year. And Philadelphia, with a win, can hold on to the first place spot that they've occupied since their opening night of the season. Monroe, number three, off of McIntosh. And Indeed, uh, power with possession. See, defensively, which has been the problem for the power, they're closing the ball down faster than I've ever seen them do this year. They're not allowing the charge to turn very quickly, and as I said, if you take an extra touch, if you don't have someone supporting you, the charge are losing possession. So it's been uh, pretty even Steven here through the opening uh, 17 minutes. Well, you know, it's funny, like, most of the, most of the plays between each 18 or each six yard box. You haven't seen a whole lot of chances on goal yet. Here's Jen Teachin racing back. Her identical twin sister here today as well, Jim. Yeah, her sister plays uh, for San Diego and uh, got in uh, near the end of that game, that 5-4 wild one there. Nine goals scored, they broke a record there. There's Ronnie Fair. Got my uh, sisters confused. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Ronnie and Lori Fair. Her uh, mother was on uh, the microphone last year with us uh, doing the game. And we're not kidding. Her name is May Fair from the San Francisco region. I think maybe be in the court. Uh, May may be here tonight. And still looking for our first marker in the game as uh, Waller comes forward and looks ahead for a uh, 
streaking. No call, no offsides call there as Emily Jans got behind everyone. Jans, a very dangerous player, played at the University of Maryland. She had five goals and one assist. She timed the run perfectly. Watch her run through here. And again, you can, teach and you can see out of the picture, check to see the linesman, but uh, not much power on that, but good idea to shoot early. At a good angle, and more is best test of the evening. There's no score, and here comes New York again. Wrap on the ball, and then uh, knocked away as Lawler comes forward. Gets him a throw in for Philly. McDowell with three white shirts around him. Second time tonight. They pull him a sombrero. Another time she just popped it over the defender's head. Got it on the other side. Now Lee Hong with not much sideline to work with, and it's nipped out of bounds by New York. Throw in to Philly. Whistle to throw things out. There's a quote from uh, Charlie Vasili. It's going to take a little time. I have a new motto. I wrote it down. It's one day at a time. He's the new coach of the power, and he's had eight days to prepare for this game. Philadelphia played here last weekend, beat Atlanta 3-1. to one. You'll see some of the highlights of that coming up at the half as they battle inside the penalty area, and then it's knocked away. But here comes Mitz forward to chip it back in. Left side looking for a breaking Iverson. He came all the way off the back line. Lee Hong knocks it back in. What a great ball for Zhao Lee Hong. And of course, Iverson tracked it as far as she could. There's McIntosh and Zhao Lee Hong, who got that great assist last week. And look at this dangerous ball put in by Mitz. But watch the second runner. Lee Hong wow. puts it back there in a diving head ball Great from Whit McIntosh. She was running away from the play and didn't even look back and made a perfect pass. Now here's the hook in from Ferry right on. Weber on the rebound is P. Shaw. It's slapped away. Best scoring chance of the evening. Some great defending there. I think it was Anita Rapp, but Weber unable to hold on to that ball, but the, the power dodged a bullet right there. Boy, Lori Fair, who kind of mishit her first corner, was right on the money with this one. And here comes another. Low liner again, and no, this one is short and off the near post looking for teaching. Yeah, look at him smiling away. They're trying to exploit that near post. Well, they know each other pretty well. Weber couldn't handle that shot. It was loose, and it looked like an excellent opportunity for Pichon to bounce, but the New York power defense was there to deflect it out of play. We're starting to get uh, some real uh, bona fide chances in the box now as we move in the, past the 20th minute in the first half. 21st minute here in Philadelphia. The Charge with just one loss on the season. Carolina surges to the league lead in the standings with a win this past week over San Jose. But Philly can draw back into its tie and then still have a game in hand in the regular season standings. There's a takeaway. And Mildred on the loose. She's on it. Reversing field. Moves to the middle. And then the defense finally collapses on Mildred. Great defending from Connors. Connors got back and took the ball. And one, I was going to say, though, one thing that the charge has to be aware of tonight, they read the power. Of course, watch the speed on Milbert. She just blows by a couple defenders here. And again, watch Connors over there. Just get your foot on it. There's three defenders that time on her. He's shown the other way. And there she is looking for the lead and against three defenders. Before Fair chips it over the sideline. I feel you on a thrower with end-to-end -end action right now. Wild West City, Pichon popped the ball over defenders. They're going the other way. Watch this. This is a great timed run into the defense here. Going to pop the ball over Welcher. That seems to be the move that's on tonight. Again, good defending by Welcher. A little bit of shoulder charge there. And New York. Oh, Iverson uh, comes up to bang Milbrick. And good hard play right now. Fair with a little wizardry to draw it through for Pichon. That great ball from Laurie Fair. I don't think Lee Hong was ready for that. That's right, Lee Hong. Here's Connors back into the box now. Hooking a pass for Pichon. Turn, Lee. It's Xiao Lee Hong again? No, it was Pichon. Pichon. <laughs> Darren at Pichon. It's hard to see from up here. Yeah, Darren at Pichon pulling that ball down. Unable to turn all the way on that. But Connors doing much better now, getting good service in from the wing. It is kind of hard to see through the Canadian ash now that it's blown <laughs> over uh, Villanova. Yeah, it's almost like the fog ball in Chicago. Last time they met was early back in the season up in New York, Jimmy. Hey, Sean, watch the pace acceleration on it here as whoever tries to get the ball to get their feet takes it down. Kelly Smith puts the PK away, and that's the way it ended. 
the first meeting this year. Two to one, Philadelphia won that one and has only lost once since. And Milbert not Milbert not playing in that game, Mina Mostad in and from the charge side, also Mandy Clemens, uh, as well as uh, one other charge player uh, who was missing that day, that was Lori Finn. Called to national duty, I think, at the time. Mary Francis Monroe, number three, for Philadelphia. Iverson wears number 14, takes the place of uh, Doris Fiction, you may remember a year ago, was the rock of the defender, the veteran 37-year-old out of uh, Germany. You know, it almost seems like we're right here, the come blind side on the charge and try and win the ball, especially teaching. And Iverson had to be very careful centrally in the defense. We're midway through the first half. You're watching the WUSA on Comcast Sportsnet and MSG. The power versus the charge from Villanova Stadium. I'm Lee Chili, along with Jim Harrison. Coming up at the half, we'll be talking with the uh, league commissioner. We'll recap last week's action and highlights of this first half as well. But we're about halfway through the first half of play. And no score. That was a great tackle there from McDowell. Some good defending by Mix. Well in for New York. Back into play on the near sidelines is Fair. Good sliding move again by Heather Mitz, but she got to get up because Fair's already thrown it back in. Iverson there to back her up, and Mitz is hobbled in midfield right now. Really hurting as New York drives towards the goal, and Alice Moore scoops it up. There's 13. To say Mitz going in for a good slide, good hard, hard slide tackle there, and looks like she jammed her ankle a little bit on the turf. No times out in the uh, sport of soccer, of course. Xiao Li Hong on the move now for Philadelphia. Well, here's where they're playing well. Lawler and Rapp, they're getting the ball and they're playing right to play your feet. But that's not on, they're going long to Milgrit and Jan. And Mitz looking a little tentative there. Uh, defensively as New York starts to force the play down the left side line. Lawler out of Santa Clara is doing well to hold the ball here. Now, this is the power. have had trouble keeping possession. This is well done. They're all the way to the other side of the field, but Christy Pierce, one of the co-captains. Christy Pierce gives it and goes. It doesn't get it back, and New York can't keep it in play. Ball to Philadelphia. Let's see what happened to Mitz here. And Mitz, some very good timing on this slide tackle. Gets the ball, but again, I, I guess, I don't know. Who no, I, think she caught, I think she caught Fair's right foot in her right shin. She was jumping over. Yeah, uh, it's plain pain. Don't know that it's any structural problem, but I know it's very painful from the looks of that. There she is on the ball now. And working with Connors and Iverson. Philadelphia unable to connect until now with Pichon at head of the pack. You can't quite get there. Philadelphia will pull you back and then go long ball to their roadrunner up front, Pichon. And here they are, Lori Fair. This, this is a fast-paced game. This is uh, from one end to the other very quickly. Now Lee Hong, who works well on that left side, look for the pass here, and the cross! And the shot was there for Pichon, but she can't finish. Pichon uh, straddled by two defenders there, unable to put it away, and it looks like the referee has over, overruled the lines. Uh, for a corner. Assistant, uh, assistant referee, yeah, for a corner. Boy, uh, this is becoming a potent combination now. Zhao Li Hong off the left side with Pichon breaking. And watch this perfect timing as she runs in there. So, well, i got to give Welch some credit, though. There's the hook, and Weber punched it away well that time. With Philadelphia in great position, and then a long ball just sails high over the crossbar by Lori Fair. Lori Fair still, as we see Saskia Weber, Weber smiling there, but uh, Lori Fair having a very good game tonight. Uh, really smacking the ball well, playing uh, out of pressure exceptionally well in the midfield and keeping possession. There's Weber. She's a, a big, strong gal in the uh, goal. She has a little bit of a weakness. It might be in her hands and holding on to those loose balls and rebounds and Philadelphia knows that, so they've been peppering her every chance they get. Yeah, that's how it looked like uh, Connors is just pushed out of, out, of, out of bounds there, but Fair uh, doing well at that left defender position. Running right into New York. And a pass right on the money. Jans. Waller. And New York has something going here. There's Mitz with a good header defensively. And here's Fair trying to bring it back the other way. End-to-end -end action here in Philadelphia. Still no score. Who will score first? 
Once again, there's Lawler on the ball, settling everyone down. They're playing balls out, getting it back, giving the ball, finding the feet of Jans and Milbert. And again, there's four or five players pushed up now on that back line, pressuring the charge. And it's over the sideline by Tietjen and the ball to New York on the throw-in. What a great deal. The charge offering fantastic discounts for groups of 15 or more. Games are more fun when you come with your friends. Call 215-467-GOAL, 467-GOAL, to get your special deal. Also, check them out at PhiladelphiaCharge.com. I always do. Great website. The whole league has it. New York Power looking for the nice first goal. Good move on the right side. Deep crossing pass to the middle. Look from Milbert. Headed away by Mix. I have to say this, so the Chargers are defending very well, especially when the point of attack is switched by the power. Some very good things going on for the power, but right now, especially Benson and Mix, the ball switched all the way to the other side. The outside defenders are shutting down that head ball. Yeah, you can see the eyes, the intensity of Heather Mix now back on her game, shaking off the injury. And back to full speed. Both sides going at it hard. Keyshawn with not much running room. New York has collapsed around number 11 effectively. Fair taking off the ball. There's Keyshawn working with Connors. The pass was on the right side, but there she is. Keyshawn down the right angle. Hooking it back towards the goal. And there's the follow shot. It's just wide by Merrick Francis Monroe. at the whole net to shoot at. Classic counterattack as Connors finds Keyshawn. Keyshawn plays it into the sixth. MFM, Mary Francis Monroe, walk at his combination play. Knocks the ball out wide, he's shown, could have crossed the pass well thrown here. Could have been missed clear from Pierce. First time, Mary Francis Monroe can't bury it. Watch the timing, FMM, squirt as she's called, oh, for the charge, hit the back of the goal. What I liked about that is Keyshawn didn't hesitate on the pass. He knocked that ball in immediately on first touch. And we have a game here. This is an excellent game. Every, every once in a while, you'll see the long ball that puts three forwards up. There's Jans, Milbert, and Rapp going across that back line. Now the charge will pick it off. They'll play quickly out of pressure. It looks like they can't find Pete Shaw. Instead, though, they go to Monroe to go local. 22 players running the fuel tank down uh, to empty tonight. You can just feel it playing hard on a humid night now. Actually, seems to be a little bit warmer than when we started tonight's affair. <laughs> New York ball on the throw-in from the near sideline. Shots, Philadelphia with seven, New York with three in the early on, but New York has put three on goal, and Philly just won. Good lead pass there, looking for Milbert breaking in. She's got an open goal, and she can throw it in there. And the defense comes through for Philly again. Again, those outside defenders, Jenny Benson doing very, very well, and I think Melissa Moore should have held her line that time. You have three or four red shirts chasing Milbert, and watch this great ball from McIntosh. Watch the acceleration by Milbert. And again, Ooh. just misses the ball completely. And she didn't have all those defenders behind her. That would have been an easy goal. Wow, good effort there by everyone. Ronnie Fair out of the corner here. And that's Connors knocking it out of play. Great defending there from Connors. And a quick uh, back into play. Connors with it. Back to Fair, who looks on the right side. And a shot is high and over the crossbar. Dangerous ball knocked over to Win, Win McIntosh. She's done McIntosh. better than that. She played at Portland, but arriving. Arriving. Uh, there's a team defense there. 0 0.8 from Philly. 1.3 from Carolina. San Jose, 1.3. That's the goal against that, as you can see. Uh, Moore works in tandem with that back four. Boy, they know each other well, don't they, Luke? Yeah, and that's uh, the two best teams in the league with the two best defenses in the league. No coincidence. Mary Francis Monroe, number three, with a Jowley Hong, who has been tough off that left side, looking for Pichon, and Weber was smart to come out that time and pick that ball off. And she wants to shut down that ball. They've been putting a lot in on a six and at the penalty spot, and that's, uh, that's for Pichon. That's her zone. Weber with a drop kick after midfield. They knock it about here. It's been pretty equal play both ways tonight. Still no score. As Rapp comes away with it for New York. Looking for Milbert breaking left side. Can she track it down? And she'll shepherd it out of bounds. And it'll be a throw in for uh, New York. See Milbert wearing the captain's armband along with Christy Pierce out of Point Pleasant, New Jersey. The outside defender for the power. And she'll give it up for Fair. 
and we'll just look at the Milbrin to start the play. Marked by Connors, pushed further away. Fair, he's had a strong night, number 17. Double team, Nitz with it, bangs it out. Quick on the ball, Welch is coming forward. Then Jen Lower draws the crowd, and now Craig's to the middle of the field. Lower having an exceptional night. Look at that. She wrote off two defenders there, switched the point of attack to Pierce. Pierce comes up the sideline, and now she'll throw it, number three, for Lawler, 13. And you can feel a little tension in the air, like we're close to someone breaking out here, breaking on top. Let's see what happens. Connors, number 12, for Philly in a foot race. And Moore scoops it out of the air on the long shot by McIntyre. Great catch by Moore in there, getting off her line, very mobile. Holds the ball, cuts off the cross, and shuts down that service. Moore with a big, booming putt across midfield. Jowie <laughs> Hong can't control it. That's Lori Fair with Milbert, very careful with the ball. Well done by the charge there. They opened up a lot quicker. And McDowell hold on to it and get out of this pressure. Good job by Fair as well. Good work, and Zhao Li Hong has some running room. And watch Keyshawn break right now, and here they come. She cuts to the middle and shoots, and the best save of the night by Suski Weber, who had to stretch out and held on to that one. Well, about six passes from the charge, and they break out. Li Hong hits that cannon from about 25, but Weber up to the test. Watch Li Hong take off, and there's Keyshawn goes to the left and clears space. Whacks it with her right foot, yep. Weber outstretched. Boy, she went left, 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 and this time cut to the right and found some room for the best shot attempt of the night. See, at this point, both of these teams are playing excellent soccer. It's who can outthink who, who can play a little bit faster than the other, because every 50-50 ball is being shut down. Uh, the defending is excellent tonight. And New York is getting a real lift so far from the play of Saskia Weber into the starting lineup again tonight. Here's Pierce, looking for Rapp, looking for Milbrook. And Connors starts to play, and the pass is offline. New York with it. Chance. Knocked away by Monroe, throwing to New York. Still no score. It's about 10 minutes to go here in the first half of play. And Villanova State, we're just outside of Philadelphia. Lori Fair, Mary Francis Monroe through the middle. Looking for Pichon on the run. Is she onside? Here comes Weber. Pichon can't get the shot away. There's a tremendous stop by Weber. She had to come out that time. Looked like an old MLS NASL shootout. She shut her down about the 23-yard line, but a great ball right up the middle of the field. And Weber again, Jimmy, looking very sharp, making quick decisions and decisive plays in the goal. There's Lee Hong again off that left side, cuts back towards the middle, and this time a good sliding tackle by Pierce to knock it out of harm's way. Good wing play, though, from Lee Hong, but you're right, Pierce shutting down that, uh, that tackle there. And there's Weber having a great game so far, shutting down a lot of the crosses, especially these shots. Yeah, in many ways, she's, she's had to roam, come off the line, and make some big plays on her own. Here's the throw in for McDowell by Philadelphia. They're in the red, moving left to right, still looking for the first goal of the night. A little hesitation there, and it's taken away by Lawler. Great opportunistic move by Lawler there. She faces three defenders and gets the ball through. And with Milbert, and the, over the sidelines, it goes back to Philadelphia. They'll have a throw in. Well, you haven't seen Mitz and Benson get forward too much because they're so busy tracking these forwards, but what they're doing very well is playing out of pressure, but they need to have that ball go to somebody's feet. There's a long ball. We'll go over the sideline and go back to New York possession. Again, what a great buildup. Tremendous ball from Mary Frances Monroe. And here's Weber shutting down that one-on-one -on -one breakaway and making herself large, as they say in the game, or big, or hitting the deck sideways. She is, a, she is a big girl, and she covered up a lot of the angles there. There wasn't much to shoot at. In that situation, there were no defenders behind her. If she was going to, if she got her, she was going to be gone and behind her. It was all or nothing. Here comes a New York sub down here, Jimmy. They'll go to uh, Justy Bumgard in a moment. Right, and I think she just got married as Baumgart Yamada, so we'll just say that for now. But 
uh, for reasons of, of, of pulling the game, will bomb guard for now. Still has it on her jersey, so uh, we'll go with that. At any rate, in the 38th minute, and no score here in Philadelphia. Oh, nice little back pass for Benson, the cross for Pichon, and well anticipated by Pierce. Well, you can see right now, though, the fact that Benson is getting forward. You can see why she's been called up for the U.S. national team, getting forward there, giving the, the charge another option out wide. Lee Hong, what a great flick on, and there's wow. Benson. Orman can't catch her, the ball knocked out by Pierce again. Really nowhere to go with that. Pierce came back uh, uh, backtrack defensively behind the play. McIntosh coming out, Jimmy, number 14, replaced by Baumgart Yamada. Baumgart had played at uh, Portland University and started a number of games for the Washington Freedom last year. Corner kick, Lori Fair, and again they drill it low for the near post to no avail. They must see something there, Jim. Ooh, there's a hard play. And a yellow card will be shown. No, I think she just, yeah, you're right, Lou. I thought she's going to keep it in, but she pulled it out. Ken Benson, number six, called for the foul. Nice flick by Milburn. Watch this acceleration again. All right, that's a late hit. Yeah, that's a good call. Good camera work there, guys. Pick up a couple of hard plays here. It's been a hard fought game here for 39 minutes. 39th minute of play. Still no score on Philadelphia's main line. One of the great hotbeds of soccer in the mid-Atlantic region. Just west of the uh, Philadelphia proper. That's where we're watching the charge in power tonight. And a power. Oh, and that one almost broke but offside. Oh, and Philadelphia was able to make a play defensively. Orman testing that back line to see if she could sneak through, but definitely offside. You can see that, that back four, that back line uh, operating tandem. Uh, yeah, they make a pretty clear line for you. They're almost always in sync along the back there. There's Milbert trying to get around that line, and Iris in number 14, who plays the defensive middle. And here's Pierce trying to start it again for New York. But Milbert's turned into a, a one-woman wrecking machine, and she's really tearing it up out there in the last five minutes. Yeah. They can't afford to keep giving her that kind of room or that kind of service. Probably better off shutting off the passes to her. She's just a superior athlete. Here's the offside. You can see it. Yes. So clearly a step off. No score. Tick into the 40th minute. Philly on the move. Xiao Li Hong with that left foot again. So this time to go over the end line, but touched by New York. Well, I'll tell you, that left wing area, Mark Corian talks about taking their time and not rushing into that attacking third. But right now, Xiao Li Hong and Benson are really starting to get down that side. As you see Mark Corian, the head coach of the Philadelphia Charge. Corey Fair about to take the corner. Now, this is her fourth, uh, fifth corner already, Jim. And I, I'm wondering if they're going to keep drilling it at the near post because they're looking for Tejan and Iverson there. Uh, this one a little higher, and Weber slaps it away with the right hand. That might have hooked into the goal otherwise. You're absolutely right, Lou. That was bending in. A great one from Fair there. And now they're starting to play with uh, uh, the different service, uh, not necessarily the near post. Here it is a little bit uh, behind her that time, yep. and she was up to the task. Here comes Philadelphia's ninth corner of the match, and this time from Jen Benson on the left side, who's been very effective in this role for Philadelphia. Just three corners from New York so far. And here it is, another low-line drive. And Milbert was out there, and there's Laurie Fair with it now for Philly. Trying to chip right back for Pichon. Iverson a little bit out of position up front, battling for it right now. And good New York defense. Good defense there, and you can see great combination play. Also from the charge, though, you can see if you take an extra step, uh, extra touch on the ball, you're likely to get hit in this kind of game. And this is what makes it an interesting game to see who can outthink who. Ronnie Fair and Laurie identical. Oh, here, watch this now. Teach him to throw in. Very strong at this. Gets it all the way to the goal now. The down, and Pichon on the follow, still there. Fair for New York, gets it over the sideline. Good hustle there from Pichon, there's Lawler on the ball. Lawler, pardon me. Two-time All-American out of Santa Clara. And there's Pichon, who's lurking, still no score for either of the big stars here tonight. It's fair with the throw-in. And a takeaway to Connors, then they blow the whistle. In our 42nd minute. So New York will have it. Okay, New York's had a lot of tough times this year. They're on national TV, uh, losing 4-3 to San Jose. That's when uh, Randy Chastain uh, scored on a penalty kick near the end, but that's the game. Milbert had the hat trick in. 
And of course, the, the power uh, have beaten San Diego this year where uh, the Chargers have had real problems uh, with San Diego. That goal for either team uh, before the half would be huge. About two and a half, three minutes to go. Summer is here. Sign up now to play with the power at New York Power Camp. Learn techniques, prove your skills from New York Power coaches and players. The sessions are filling up fast, so log on today to nypower.com for more information about New York Power and their camp. Well, you just mentioned, you know, it's, it is a tough part of the game here with only a couple minutes to go to half. Neither team wants to give up a goal here. We'll see if they start playing long balls into their own attacking thirds and keep it away. There with a throw in, and Mary Francis Monroe midfield for Philly. That's Benson as they set up along the back. Iverson with a good deep ball for Charlie Holland down the left side. He lets Benson go by on the overlap and then chips long for Pichon again. But they have defended that well tonight. McDowell is able to get it away to Mary Francis Monroe. Benson out of the corner is tough over there. Gets it all the way to go, but too far for all. There's McDowell tracking it down deep on the right side. And Benson admits cross behind her. And now flicked away by the New York defense. And on the money is the pass for Rapp. Get some help from a hustling. Waller, but it's over the sideline and possession to Philadelphia now. Yeah, that would have been the place to put it there. I don't think uh, Pierce got out quick enough there. They would have been behind the George defense here, but it looks like a minute to go. Lou, uh, and they've just given a put. Look at that deep ball, and Moore was off her line. That had potential for disaster for Philly. A disaster written all over that there. You can see Melissa Moore breathing a sigh of relief. You can't give that ball up in this type of game in the defensive third. And it uh, looks like the power has really uh, found their stride. Good kick off her line now, and there's a whistle. We have just seconds left. New York with a long chip looking for Milbert, and Moore will scoop it up. Good communication there. Moore calling Tijin off and just let it drop in, and she's going to go for the territorial advantage upfield into the midfield. We have just seconds remaining in the first half. Dow is battling with it with bum dart. And Mary Francis Monroe sends Zhao Lei Hong down the left side again. Pierce marking her. Into the corner they go. She drives it across. No one there. And New York able to clear, but over the sidelines. Clock showing 45 minutes. And a whistle. And that's it. The first half is complete, hard fought, and pretty darn even by both sides. And the score reflects that none. Love, love, nil, nil, none, none, <laughs> zero, zero at the break. We come back and talk with Tony DeShigo, the, co the commissioner of the WUSIA, and check out some of the action from this past week in the league and recap the first half as well. Stay tuned. Homeowners, call Garden State Brick Base Windows and Exteriors and get a new house without having to move or spend a fortune. That's right. You can give your home a new look and feel any look you desire. And it just takes one phone call. For years, we've been beautifying thousands of area homes, making them more energy efficient while increasing their value. Brick, stucco, stone, siding, and windows. Quality craftsmanship, most work done within a week. All maintenance-free and fully guaranteed. Let us help you design the perfect look for your home. Call Garden State Brick Base Windows and Exteriors. To find out if our unique products are right for you, call now for a free telephone consultation. It just takes a few minutes. There's absolutely no obligation. 100% financing available. So why wait when a simple call can get you a great new house without spending a fortune? Call 1-800-647-1600 and ask about our current special discount. Shop from home with our exclusive free telephone consultation. Call 1-800-647-1600. From the runways, to the racks, to stepping out, Metro TV has the inside on what's hip, what's hot, and where you can get it. The trendsetters. This is for a small bird. I want to be a big bird. And the style makers. We're such clothing addicts. Yeah. From the fashion capital of the world, Metro TV brings 7th Avenue to your living room. Metro TV. Turn on New York. <laughs> 
Before a select ball leaves the factory, it must pass an inspection like no other in the world for flight trajectory, surface abrasion, stitch resiliency, and a perfectly consistent bounce. Some balls, however, are chosen by Chief Inspector Anna Lankoven for a more extreme set of tests. Her procedures are somewhat confidential. When you speak of pure heart, pure passion, pure basketball, you have to write below that liberty. We play team basketball. Every time you go out on the court, you know somebody's got your back. The liberty is pure passion, leaving everything out there on the court. That's the way we play the game. That's what we give day in and day out. Give me liberty. The Liberty Earth the Garden to battle the mercury. Monday night on MSG Network. The New York Liberty on MSG. This is our town. This game is brought to you by TJ Maxx. TJ Maxx, you should go. By Quick Goal, the official goal and field equipment supplier of the WUSA. By Novacare, Novacare Rehabilitation, the leader in physical rehabilitation with 90 centers in the Delaware Valley. And by WE, Women's Entertainment, the new cable network for women. We're back here at the half. I'm Lou Tilly along with Jim Harrison. And Jim, you got the coach. Hey, Mark, this is Jimmy Harrison. They seem to be pressuring you uh, very strongly there, but you've been seen to be breaking out down the left wing. Uh, do you want to do more of that, and how are you going to break out of the pressure quicker? Yeah, you know, it's a small field, and most people come out in high pressure, so there is space available on the sides, and uh, I agree with you, Jimmy. We have had some luck on the left uh, with Lee Hong, and hopefully have a little more luck uh, in the second half and maybe start playing a little bit right-handed as well. Uh, does your back four have to be a little more careful? It almost seems that at times they have three or four forwards up there trying to read when you're building out of the back. They're trying to jump you blindside. What are you going to tell your uh, back four about that? Yeah, we just need to be a little bit careful coming out of the back. Um, you know, a lot of different times we've been able to get the ball and, and make a penetrating pass uh, and eliminate some of their forwards that are pressuring, but uh, we just have to be a little bit careful, that's all. Okay, Coach, uh, we thank you for your time, and uh, good luck in the second half. Thanks, guys. Coach Mark thank Krikorian you. and his Philadelphia Charge at the half now in the deadlock with the New York Power. There's no score. We'll be back with more on MSG and Comcast Sportsnet. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. I'm your Venus. I'm your fire. You're Only fire. Venus from Gillette makes it easy to feel as smooth as a goddess. Its three-blade refills are shower-safe and simple to change. They're where you need them, when you need them. So the closest shave and smoothness that lasts is within the reach of every goddess. Venus, reveal the goddess in you. And now get that lasting smoothness with new Crystal Clear Venus. Hey, the New York Power's psyched about this season, spending time with our fans and showing the world how soccer's really played. They have this thing called the Power Zone, where you can play games, listen to cool music, and win stuff. I stayed after every game last season, and I got all players' autographs. Come out and cheer the Power to a championship. We'll be there, will you? They call them players. Some call them stars. But the red dust on their uniforms doesn't lie. These guys work for a living. On a field of grass and dirt and chalk, pulling out a miracle or two on their way to October. A new season, a new team, a new network. The New York Mets, now on MSG. This is our town. Have the chance to win big watching the Metro Stars on MSG Network in the AT&T Wireless Million Dollar Season. To enter, log on to MetroStars.com or stop by participating AT&T Wireless locations in New Jersey. Then watch the Metro Stars Battle Columbus July 31st on Fox Sports Net. If your name is mentioned during the telecast, you could win $50,000 at the Metro Stars game August 17th. Entries must be received by noon on July 25th. For complete details and contest rules, check out MetroStars.com. This copyrighted telecast may not be retransmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcast without the express written consent of women's professional soccer. Here on the beautiful western suburbs of Philadelphia on the main line on the campus of Villanova, we are at the half, and the New York Power 
uh, be lying their disappointing record so far. They have played the Philadelphia Charge even, even, no score, and we're at the break. If you missed some of the action from this past week in the WUSA, take a look. Let's roll the highlights. Randy Chastain and Christine Lilly were all smiles as they welcomed the WUSA's one millionth fan to Nickerson Field. In the 26th minute, Dagny Melgren collects the ball, gives it off to Marin Miner, through the defense, and a nice pass cross field to an open Christine Lilly, who sends a rocket past Cyberways keeper Lakeisha Bean. The game finished in a 1-1 draw. Marinette Pichon looked to add to her nine goals on the season as the charge took on the beaded Villanova. 73rd minute, and Pichon will start the play with a header to Mary Frances Monroe. Lou Eileen will get it back to Pichon. And she'll split the defense and beat Brianna Scurry for her 11th of the year. The charge moved through the beat 3-1. to one. Charlie Ducilli planned a positive beginning. His first game as head coach of the New York Towers. They took on the Washington Freedom at home at Mitchell Field. 62nd minute. Amy Wallback chases the ball up the side, passes to Mia Hamm in the middle of the box. Hamm able to get two shots off, stopped by keeper Gal Hong, but the third time is the charge as Mia leads the Freedom to a 4-1 win. The mighty Carolina Courage look to stay tied atop the WUSA standings as they took on the San Diego Spirit at SAS Stadium in Cary, North Carolina. 29th minute, Tiffany Roberts maintains control and gets off a pass to Prince. Zips the ball past the keeper for her sixth goal. The Courage roar past the Spirit. 3-0 is the final. And so Carolina technically in first place pending the outcome of tonight's game. More from the first half. The power and Philadelphia. No score. We're right back. Alain Hurley owns a Hyundai Elantra. I researched it on the internet. There was no comparison. The competition can't match the freedom of America's best warranty. The warranty for the Elantra was the best out there. It also has a long list of features, including front and side airbags. It's the only car in its class that has them standard. The gas mileage is excellent. It's a great value for the money. The Hyundai Elantra at just $12,549. It's a solid value. Freedom is calling, yeah. Get $750 cash back or 0.9% financing during our Hyundai summer sell-down. $50 pants. Pay 20. Saw it at the mall for 100. Got it yesterday for 50. Only $70. Savings worth talking about. TJ Maxx, you should go. Come to McDonald's for the classic taste of the Big Mac. Two all beef patties, special sauce. Hey, Stitch, get your own commercial. Oh, okay. Cowabunga! Head to McDonald's and share in the magic and fun of Disney's newest full-length animated feature film, Lilo and Stitch. And pick up our cool new Surf Bobbler Happy Meal toys. There's one in every family. My name is Linda. I smoked for 21 years, and I'm dying of emphysema. The tobacco company says smoking is an adult choice. Today I'm dying because of a choice I made when I was 16. I'm losing the strength to fight for myself and to be with my loved ones. I'm not going to get better. I'm going to die. Back on the campus of Villanova and home of the Philadelphia Charge, hoping for the win tonight to crawl back into a tie with Carolina atop the WUSA. There's no score at the half, New York and Philadelphia. I'm Lou Tilly along with Jim Harrison. Bit of a surprise, Jimmy. Well, actually, you know, uh, they were going to break out today, New York Power, according to jo Charlie DeSilly, and it looks like it's happened a little bit, but the Charges had better the possession, but... The power definitely in this game. It's been back and forth. So let's take a look at some of the highlights here in the first half brought to you by Energy. And it certainly was an energetic first half. Here's Benson breaking for Philly. Benson, one of our classic overlaps. You're going to see Weber get off the line and shut that down from Loki Pichon. And watch again. What a great save here, but kept it alive. Pichon's shot is blocked. But here's some very good wing play from Lee Hong. Watch this shot. 
and watch the save from Weber. Cutting down the angle and making her completely outstretched again. This is being a better save. She hits the ball over the bar for the New York Tower. Weber has been super sharp, and so uh, she is working the shutout so far in the first half. And look at the shots. Philadelphia has peppered her 9-5 to five in overall shots. The shots and the corner kicks are the indicator that I would say that George has a little bit better possession, but oh so dangerous has been Tiffany Milbert and Lawler first in this game. First half stats brought to you by Penn Orthopedics, one of our proud sponsors tonight. We're back with a start the second half of tonight's match from Villanova. No score, Philadelphia and New York. Hey, the New York Power psyched about this season, spending time with our fans and showing the world how soccer is really played. They had this thing called the Power Zone, where you can play games, listen to cool music, and win stuff. I stayed after every game last season, and I got all players' autographs. Come out and cheer the Power to a championship. We'll be there, will you? Helen Hurley owns a Hyundai Elantra. I researched it on the internet. There was no comparison. The competition can't match the freedom of America's best warranty. The warranty for the Elantra was the best out there. It also has a long list of features, including front and side airbags. It's the only car in its class that has them standard. The gas mileage is excellent. It's a great value for the money. The Hyundai Elantra at just $12,549. It's a solid value. Get $750 cash back or 0.9% financing during our Hyundai summer sell-down. The most amazing fans are in for a real treat. The World Series! MSG's ready to take you back to the 10 most amazing Mets games you've ever seen. But we'll need to know which ones. Just log on to msgnetwork.com and vote. You could win one of 10 amazing prizes, including a trip to Mets Spring Training or Mets Dream Week in Florida. You pick them, we'll air them, starting July 29th on MSG. Vote for your 10 amazing games, presented by Family Health Plus, only at msgnetwork.com. Hyundai. Driving is believing where the freedom of America's best warranty, the Hyundai Advantage is standard equipment. By News 12 Networks. News 12, as local as local news gets. And by Novacare. Novacare Rehabilitation, the leader in physical rehabilitation with 90 centers in the Delaware Valley. Beautiful shot. That's a shot of Philadelphia's Schuylkill River and Boathouse Row, the site of some of the most uh, famous uh, rowing events in all the world. We're just outside the western uh, border of Philadelphia on Philadelphia's main line in Villanova on the campus of the university, the home of the Philadelphia Charge, no score at the half, the power, and Philadelphia. New York in the white will move left to right here in the second half. Philadelphia in their home red will move right to left. Still looking for our first goal of the night in a very well-played first half of action. If you're just joining us, I'm Lou Tilly, along with Jim Harrison. And Jimmy, now that we have a guest in the booth, you really don't need me here. Well, Tony DeChico, it's good to see you again. Jim, my pleasure, Lou. It's good to be here. Good to have you here. Tony, last year, uh, you pretty much picked out the international talent with Lauren Gregg. How has that changed this year? Well, we always felt that the coaches and the general managers should build their teams and their vision. You see what Mark Kikorian has done with his international talent. Of course, Pichon is the leading scorer in the league as far as goals scored. And, uh, you know, I think the coaches are doing a great job. Well, there's a shot, a deep one in on Moore. She short hops it and handles that. Tony, last week when we were doing the Atlanta game against Philadelphia here, I just happened to notice there were nine different nations represented on this field here. That's a really wonderful thing for your league. Well, Lou, we always said we wanted to have the best soccer league in the world, and we've delivered, and it's exciting to see the development both on and off the field from year one. Indeed, and uh, the great ones are coming here, uh, uh, the Chinese Nationals. Now, I, thought, I found it amusing when they were debating whether or not they'd let the, uh, the player in basketball come to the U.S. and play, and I thought, heck, they've been playing here for two years in, uh, in the WUSA. Isn't that hilarious? Uh, they try to get one player, and we have nine in our league, but uh, Zhao Li Hong is an indication of how good the Chinese are. 
terrific uh, player. There's uh, Lori Fair and taken away at midfield and coming the other way. New York on the counter, and there's an offside call. Tony, uh, as far as the U.S. national team's concerned, uh, much in a way Bruce Arena had to look at the MLS. Do you feel with the likes of Abby Wambach and uh, Klugel as we see uh, Milbert clearly offsides, but uh, getting back to those two players and a lot of other players, how's that going to help the U.S. side? Well, this league is going to have tremendous impact. I mean, a Jenny Benson is being called in for this uh, international against Norway. Without this league, players like Jenny and Heather Mitch and uh, some of the other excellent domestic players we have would not get the opportunity to play for the national team. I think it's going to help our women's national team immensely, just as it has, just as MLS has had uh, impact with the men's league. Heather Mitz on the throw-in from the far side. Here's an interesting, I think it's interesting, I point as a broadcaster, Tony, how about overseas where the game is so very popular? Have you been able to get your product on television overseas in any of the uh, cable pickups? Well, we, we have, uh, actually, China televises our game. We, we're, we're still talking to some of the Europeans, of course, with the World Men's World Cup that was slowed down. Right. Last year, we had uh, New Zealand tele televising our game. So we are getting some interest overseas. A little showbiz here. Uh, any possibility, ability like home run derby? You take the best keepers in the league and maybe you get some of the best shooters and try and bang balls over the wall for 50 Gs, something like that? Wow. Jim, that's creative, <laughs> but I'm not sure we're ready for it yet. All right, well, keep it in line. <laughs> I try to do that every day up here with him, uh, Kenny. <laughs> And we're just trying to turn it in. We're in the opening moments of the second half of play. We've uh, battled so far without a goal. What about that, Tony? Is, is it necessarily a lot of people who'd like to criticize the game say that the game needs more scoring to catch on in the U.S.? Well, scoring is a great thing, and of course, we all want to see uh, goals scored, but this is a well-played game. You know, uh, Philadelphia's having a lot of success down their left flank. They probably need a little bit more success in, on their right flank, and right now, um, New York is hanging in there, but their midfield and central defense are being challenged a bit here. They've got to stay cohesive. No subs, by the way, since the first half of play. You mentioned some of the players who are stepping up now and heading back to national play where you had such great success. Here's a look at the players on the floor tonight who uh, will be stepping forward for the U.S. And Jenny Benson, Lori Fair, and of course Tiffany Milbritton. How good is Tiffany Milbert? Has she slowed down at all, Tony? <laughs> no, no, she's there. still a dynamo. She's uh, she's a force out there. And really, what Tiffany needs to do is stay as high as she can with the last defender. She'll always drift back into midfield, but you see when she gets the ball how dangerous she is. Her acceleration is just unbelievable. She's left a number of defenders in the dust tonight. Now you were talking earlier about you kind of left it to your coaches to develop their styles and, 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 and their philosophies. And what a great example of it here with Praetorian. He seemed to know what he was doing when he went against some of the conventional thinking a year ago when he started this franchise. Well, you're right on. I mean, uh, Mark did a great job of recognizing young potential and talent and then developing it. So last year, this team was a bit of a surprise, but it hasn't surprised anyone this year. They have been the best team in the league through the first uh, half of the season. And there's Mark. He talked with us at the half and said that he'd like to see his team build a little more up on the right side here, Jim, in the second half of play and uh, try and get something going. I haven't been down south yet to see the uh, Carolina franchise. They continue to play super soccer, obviously. Uh, I would think that that would be a great market for them with Chapel Hill so nearby. Well, it is, and they have a... Uh, a wonderful new stadium, uh, it's full dimensions, it's right in the heart of their uh, our demographic there, and they're an exciting team. You know, of course, they just uh, got Birgit Prince in the lineup from Germany. She's the best striker in Germany. I think she has seven goals already. So they're an exciting team, and right now you'd have to look at Philadelphia and Carolina as the class of the league. Well, we're, we're One last question yes, about the World Cup next year in 2003 in China. Uh, are you going to try and start the league a little bit earlier or do something to, uh, to accommodate the, the national team so they get the players early enough? Well, the, the World Cup is from late September to mid-October, but we're looking at all options. Obviously, the coaches will want the players as early as possible. I was in Shanghai in May. They're very excited about putting on uh, a World Cup like we witnessed in the U.S. in 1999. Uh, and we're going to see a lot of our players in this league playing not only for the U.S. team, but the other international teams. That should be very interesting. Tony DeGico, the commissioner of the uh, WUSA in its second year, and sailing along and kind of a, 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 don't adjust your picture, by the way, all along the East Coast, we're having the same problem with the fires drifting down from Quebec uh, all along the Northeast region, and it's a little bit hazy here tonight. Tony, thanks for stopping by and joining us. Nice to meet you. Lou, thank you very much, Jim. Thanks, Tony. Continued success.
And there's no score on the floor on this holiday weekend. A good crowd has turned out here at Villanova, uh, where many of the locals would head to the South Jersey Shore to spend the entire weekend, but uh, many are here tonight. A good crowd, good promotion put on by the charge with the Powerpuff Girls of the Hollywood fame on hand here. Many of the young people attending tonight's game got a ticket to see the movie included in their price. And uh, speaking of hot movies for the kids right now, Scooby-Doo will be here on July 24th for the match that night in person. And the same deal going for uh, your little one. It's going to come out on that night. Uh, that's a Wednesday night. Right? July 24th, Scooby-Doo night here with the charge. Well, the battle goes on out I here. think Scooby-Doo up in the booth, actually. Scooby-Doo is probably a good goal scorer in his time. No score here tonight as the power continues to surprise and give the charge everything they can handle. Lalo playing out of midfield and uh, no charge cut at their defense has been rocked. Lalo's first look was to Orman. I think she should have hit out wide. She saw Mildred going up the middle and was unable to turn on such an acute angle. But the battle goes on here, Lou, and they're really fighting for both teams for every single touch on the ball. Now yeah, there's been an error of, uh, an error of tension for, oh, I don't know, about 25 game minutes as you really get the feeling that the first goal will be the winner here tonight. You'll see as we click into our 53rd minute. We played eight minutes in the second half. No substitutions after the break. And a free kick coming up for New York. And deep into the box on the run and just shooting it a little bit far for Rapp, trying to break in from the left side. Yeah, she needed to have her run out a little bit wider to run onto that. It was a little too much up the middle. Log on to nypower.com for your chance to win a prize package with New York's hottest Millies. Win four tickets to the Power's August 10th home game versus Mia Hamm and the Washington Freedom. Four tickets to see the 2002 Tony Award winning best musical Thoroughly Modern Millie. Dinner at Coley's Restaurant and an overnight stay at the Renaissance New York Hotel. Go to nypower.com and complete the online registration form today for your chance to win. That's a pretty good prize package. You know what Broadway tickets go for these days, Jimmy? Big time. I don't think you've seen anything outside of Union uh, Dinner Theater lately, but it's, we're talking about hundreds. You're taking a shot there. <laughs> That's the little one. <laughs> We're all with local theater. We love it. Just those of us down here in Philly aren't used to those $100 per prices. Here's Pierce to throw it in from the near sidelines for Philly. And it is really hazy out there right now. Nice little back flip pass with uh, no one there for New York. And there, I wonder if they're starting to drag a little bit. Or if fatigue is a factor at this point. They've been running awfully hard. Yes, they have. It almost seems right now that the power are trying to attack it initially up the middle of the field with a lot of traffic. Let's just say in the first half, they, they attacked excellently from one side of the field to the other and also hit that long ball early. And uh, they're still playing very good defense though, which is, is good for them. They were really playing end to end both teams. And you wonder if that took a toll here in the second half. You look a little bunched up, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, but now you see the charge is still trying to get out wide. Now the game has slowed down. The pace was so frenetic in the first half that the charge weren't able to do a whole lot of these things. And again, Connor's being stripped out wide. Good example. Ball. Yeah. Good example of what you're talking about. I and mean, there's a ball over the sideline yeah. in New York. But at least, at least they're, as you mentioned, their fatigue is kicking as we see well for the central defender for the power. It seems like they're getting a little more space to charge. And here's what we're talking about. Mary Francis Monroe will take a seat for the rest of the evening. And in comes Chinese national player Lu Ai Ling, one of the most outstanding scorers in the league a year ago. Number 10 now at age 35 has announced that this will be her last professional year in the state. She'll go back home. She's married, wants to start a family. Yep, uh, no goals this year for two assists. The big assist last week to be shown against Atlanta. She had four, uh, three multiple goal games a year ago. On the run, Peshawn from France, wide right. And hooking it around and back for Eileen just into the game and a good defensive play. Great cross, but Jans is there that time to cut it off. Long ball the other way. Mildred's gone. Mildred on the run, out in front. Can she get it off? Right on Moore, slaps it down. Boy, on the run, on the fly. She is dangerous. And Moore doing well or shut it down at the near post. And just as we turned it into a uh, sleeper, a couple of end-to-end -end plays by the uh, players on the floor and good action. Philadelphia had an excellent chance, and then they broke Milbrit the other way. That's well done by Fair and Iverson. They 
changed the pace of the game. Their rhythm has slowed down a little bit to take the air out of the ball. The power seemed to have thrived in getting into tackles, and I also see Mandy Clemens starting to warm up on the sideline. Jim, is there a, uh, a player on the field, as the point guard is in basketball, who says, okay, we're going to do this or we're going to do that, I want to slow it down? Well, or... I would say the closest thing that we had, great move by Lee Hong, the closest thing that we've had uh, with these two teams, I would say Lawler from the, the uh, power side of things and Kelly Smith from the other side. But it's a, it's a lot different, as you know, 120 yards. Uh, but you're right, it does happen, and it, and it doesn't necessarily have to be, quote-unquote, the attacking midfielder who does it. Right. Here is New York on the attack. And good ball management there. Keeps the play moving. Pierce, number three, looking for some room. Gets past Lee Hong. It's booted away by Benson. But still with possession. That's uh, Bumgart. Played it back. That's fair. Right now, it looks like the power is pushed up in a 3-5-2 in an effort to get that goal and try and get the win. And I see Pierce kind of pushed up a little bit more, but they'll still defend with at least four as we see Jan. Great ball. Look at Pichon. There she goes. Here's the shot. And a great save by Weber. Well, McDowell should have been running up on that. She would have been a step or two on top of, of Ronnie Fair. She may have been knocking that rebound. Oh, there's Pichon. Great save by Weber. We've got it all tonight. Saskia Weber playing the game of her career, perhaps, in the WUSA. Has done it all. Looks razor sharp tonight. And it was a great ball out of the midfield there. It's a great penetrating run. Watch this. Watch this penetrating run. Lei Hong getting down that left flank again. And now finally wow. shown. She hits it. Bam. Catches all of that. Weber can't hold on to it right there. Ronnie Fair has to clear. They need the charge. They need someone to run that ball into the net because that's the kind of game it is. Either one of these teams may have to run it over the line. Once again, we see Zhao Li Hong developing a great chemistry with Kishan of France. People's Republic of China, Republic of China to France. Uh, that is uh, the United, the international appeal of the WUSA. That's some good soccer right there, too, for the charge. They played out of pressure. Look at the room that Fair has. Lee Hung again on the left flank. Deep on the left. And there's the overlap by Benson. No, she goes to the midfield instead and has run off the ball pretty well by a. Pierce. He pushes her out to 40 yards or so. There's Benson, falls over the ball. And good hustle by McDowell's taken down from behind and a foul call. And I'm waiting for the call here. It looked like McDowell went in a legitimate slide tackle and then uh, someone against Philadelphia. from the power whacked uh, McDowell from behind and uh, said that that was the play. You could hear the boo birds. In the, in the, here again, legitimate slide tackle. She gets up, tries to get going. Dang. But, you know, I have to say, Milbert got the ball. That should have been yeah. just playing on. And here comes some instant offense for Philadelphia. She started off the season white hot. This cooled off a little bit. Now comes on as a sub for Connors. This is Mandy Clemens. Number 22, getting her shorts pulled up and ready to go. And also, another sub for New York. Perriman comes into the game. The place in wrap. Yep, Tammy Perriman who scored the, the long goal in the defeat last week against Washington. A very dangerous up front, front, a fast runner, and has a nose to the net. Perriman uh, is the one who had the collision last year with Doris Fitchin when Doris ended up breaking her wrist. Perriman, a very physical player who played a number of games on defense this year for the power, but is very happy to be pushed up front again with the likes of Milbert. So three player substitutions suddenly and a flurry of new uh, faces and legs on the floor. We have about 30 minutes to go. And no score. Tense but hard to fought affair here outside of Philadelphia tonight. Philadelphia Charge dropping back into second place with Carolina's win the other night while Philly was idle. Philly then has two games in hand. If they can win tonight, they tie for the league lead still with a game in hand. Long ball heading towards the end line. Philadelphia chasing, so looks like New York will have it. And the thing that's very interesting about, about both these teams, not only Milbert, but uh, eight of her fellow players have scored, and nine different players have scored for the charge. So uh, anyone could step up in this type of game. 
There's Moore off her goal line. Can't quite get it to midfield. To find Charlie Hong. Jans for New York. Yeah, Torch need to get the other side of the field. They, they're getting stuck on this side here and are being uh, closed down very quickly by the, the power defense. Something of a half court, a half field scrimmage to this point. And there. Great tackle by Mitch and good help, I think, from Clements. As Tommy pa Tammy Perriman on the uh, field. 6,303 turnout on this uh, hot summer evening on a holiday weekend here in Philadelphia to watch the power and charge play. Philly averaging about 7,000 per game. Third in the league in attendance going in tonight. That's some good stuff from Eileen. Calm the ball down. Long ball looking for McDowell on the run, but they uh, overshoot their mark. They'll play it back for Weber, who kicks it on the fly and knocks it over the sideline. Want to make your child's birthday special? Find out how the charge can help. The charge offer great birthday packages and include food, drinks, and charge merchandise. The birthday group even gets to welcome the team onto the field in person. Call 215 467 Goals for more ways to make your kid's birthday a real treat. So New York is able to clear it for a moment, but here is Philadelphia pressing. Yes, they haven't backed up right now. The power has to face their own goal. Ravea and Welch will watch them centrally. They're marking up against McDowell, as well as Iverson. It's long throw from Heejin. Heejin all the way into the box looking for Iverson, who is tall, and they like her in there. She scored a goal on a header last week. Eileen? Or rather, uh, Li Hong, and uh, no, that's Pichon, and it's Philadelphia ball. But Pichon doing well. You know, she did not let go of the ball, so she tried to get at least a cross off into that box. And now, here's Lori Fair. They've had many, many. This is their 11th corner kick. I was going to say, now do you mix it up again? They've been really drilling it to the near oh, yeah, post. They're trying to go to the far post. They have three plays right in front of Weber. This one is high, and for the far post, and there was the header. But up and over the goal it goes. But Philadelphia with an excellent scoring chance. Mandy Clemens just into the game. And that's okay. I, mean, I believe Clemens uh, uh, is playing in the midfield there, wide right. And again, the three players line up around Weber, but this time they go to the far post, and that's a great changeup. Because as you said, five or six of those corners that Lori Fair took right there have gone from the near post down to the far. Clemens getting up, needs to get it down though. Well, Saskia Weber has been impenetrable so far in the New York goal. With a not so glittery 9.2.85 goals against average. Melissa Moore, point four. Pichon in a race. Oh, that's uh, Lee Hong in a race. Lu Ai Ling is number 10 now on the field for Philadelphia. That's a good ball from Baumgart out wide. Ronnie Fair's been having a very level game. Ronnie Fair for Lawler, and then a good lead down the sideline with Perriman, but it's broken up nicely. Great ball from Iverson. They're out early. Milbrick backtracking, taking the ball away. And now, maneuvering through traffic. Loose ball. But well, Jen Benson there to clean up. But the flow switched at just the last minute. Looks like a siege from the power. Unfortunately, they're not able to keep hold of it the way they'd like to, but there's a nice ball out wide. Oh. Able to keep it in play was Jen's centering pass knocked away. Nice spin move here Boy, by Lee Hong. She has great skill on the ball. Look how calm they are now. They've taken the air of the ball. They're varying their rhythm. Got to be a little more clean in the midfield, though. The likes of Jans and Milford around. Lee Hong cutting to the middle and then just barely losing position. Shot an individual run past three defenders. The pointing for Pichon Long here. Can they get it? No. It's headed away by Welchel. Looking for Pearman ahead of the pack now. Here's where they can't let Milbert turn. A dangerous passer as well. Both teams trying uh, with the chips over the back line of the fence right now. And there it is, and it's offside. Offside, as Orman broke in behind the charge defense. And again, that time that uh, zonal back four paying off as Orman caught again offside. You can see her take a step there. And definitely offside. It was close though, but the uh, offside is. And they try it the other way for Pichon. She takes a shot at a couple of power players, but Saskia Weber again off her line. She's been very active tonight. Here's a good look at her. Veteran goalkeeper out of Princeton, New Jersey. 
And a good punt across midfield. Gang of uh, Saskia Weber had played for Coach Casilli at Rutgers when he was the coach at Rutgers where she became All-American and eventually went on with the U.S. National Team. And so here she is back in the starting role, Saskia Weber. I must say, uh, despite the injuries and the, the tough times that the Power have had this year, this is one of their best performances I've seen yet. They have struggled, no question about it, at 2-10 and 1. But you wouldn't know it watching tonight. There's that lead again for the roadrunner in front, Pichon, but they can't hook up. And here's Weber with a long toss to midfield. Well read by Lou Eileen, who's taken down from behind. And a foul called against Lawler. Yeah, and I see Mark Victorian saying, what about the yellow there? Because uh, I don't think it was too much different when Milbrook had taken down. Uh, Eileen shielding the ball very well there. Only Good one uh, there. That's it. Well, I don't know about yellow, but it was close. Definitely took her feet up from underneath. And Lawler, very, very good player. Dali Hong with a good deep pass, and there's a shot. Bicycled in there by Mandy Clements, and they almost had Pichon for a rebound. Great job by Clements there. As you see her jogging back there, almost connected with Pichon. Remember against Boston, those two played up front together with Pichon and Clements, and uh, two of the faster players on the team are very mobile. And uh, they dunk from the damage tonight. It's the New York Power versus the Philadelphia Charge at Villanova Stadium. The campus of the Wildcats. I'm Lou Tilly along with Jim Harrison. No score as we tick into our 69th minute. New York on the attack. And a loose ball almost got through. Iverson very dangerous there. You don't take that extra extra second when Milbert's on your tail. And she recovered, knocked it out well. But uh, got to be very careful with her. Jen Benson up uh, from her defensive position, number six. There's New York turning it the other way. Baumgart finding some space deep on the left with Ronnie Fair. Yeah, Baumgart has been finding uh, Ronnie Fair an awful lot out there wide left. And uh, Jans has been playing well, but looks like she's going to give this one away. Jali Hong and Pierce converge on that ball. They'll go to, go to New York. A couple of more, uh, another substitution coming, Jay. Krista Davy uh, about to come into the game for the New York Power. Out of Missoula, Montana, played at North Texas State. Also played for the Washington Freedom last year. Scored the tying goal against Atlanta when he tied Atlanta 3-3 this year. Davy into the game. They've now uh, substituted three players in the second half. Took it up to two. Clemens Eileen into the play. Cameron, Davy, and Baumgart, Yamada into the game for New York. Nice move by Mitz there on Pearman. And so the chess match continues into 70 minutes now. Still no score. Charge and power played to a 2-1 game, won by Philadelphia on a penalty kick in their only other meeting this year. Handball against Jen Benson. Jenny Burton, nevertheless. She's got to watch out, though. As you said, it was inadvertent, but um, she's playing with one yellow. And, and another one, and you're gone, right, yep, Jim? That's correct. Well, here's New York to start the play. They're looking for Perriman. And there she is on the ball. And why not? That's right, not a bad idea from Waller, and I'd say that's at least 30 yards out, 35 yards out. Moore has uh, really not been tested much. Hey fans of New York Power with a tremendous offer for you. Buy a family four-pack for either of the next two games in July, the 13th against Atlanta or the 20th against San Diego to receive four reserve tickets, four food vouchers, and four Tiffany Milbert bobbleheads, four autograph programs, and this is supposed to be $72 at one 866 six power ticks for Ticketmaster to order your New York Power family four pack today. And the answer is we still don't know. The question is who will win? Here's Pichon from the left side trying to shut on Weber and another great save by Saskia. That ball was labeled high and deep. Tremendous save there by Weber uh, deflecting that ball and kept it going the way it was going. Lee Hong, you had to have the mismatch there with Ravia able to get by here. You're going to see, then she hits the shot again. Man, it's Weber, boy, just pushing it wide of that far post. From a severe angle, she had it marked. Now, Benson on the corner. This will be their 10th of the night, Jimmy. Most in a game this season. 
There's a lot of pressure, and there's still 20 minutes to go here. We'll see what happens. Three red shirts right around Weber. Short ball. It's a low ball back for Benson. They tried this a few times. Now the hook shot in for Clemens, and she got something on it, but I don't know. Well, well executed by the charge there. Unfortunately, they couldn't get someone on the end of it. Watch Milbert to the left of your screen, though. As they continue to try and counter on the ball, that was Christy Davey with a little pop in her step. And there's a long ball looking for Bichon, headed away by the New York defense. Right now, Mark Krikorian sees that Bichon located right between Christy Welshel and Ravia, who are central defenders. They're not slow, but they're not exceptionally fast. And Pichon is exceptionally fast. I think they're trying to get that long ball mismatch on those two. Davey can't keep that one from going over the sideline. There's Pichon, the player of the month for the month of June, and the league leader with nine goals on the season in just 10 starts. No score here in Philadelphia as we click into the 73rd minute of 90. Some great width here, though, from the charge as they continue to attack. And now they go up the middle. And Zhao Li Hong has been all over the field. Look at that lead through. Can they get a shot away? No! It's just far wide and left. What a brilliant ball, though. Chipped into the middle there. You can see Li Hong had time. Not Li Hong, but Eileen had time to take a look at it. And it looks like Weber a little bit hurt on that. Gimped up a little bit. That ball kissed the post. What a great one. Look at the time that she has there. Flicks it over, Weber. You know, Weber got a piece of that. She got a piece of it and off the post, and she's still down. What a great chip, though, from Lee Hong. And you can see that Eileen got to it first, and now it's off the post. I, I credit her with a save. I think she deflected that enough to knock it wide. Let's see again. I don't know. Didn't look like it. And I, I think that uh, she pressured Eileen to hit it wide, though. It could have been. Making me hand signals like they're like uh, soupy cells did with white fang and black to it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows what that. Yes, they do. People in North that. Jersey and Philly know. <laughs> soupy was on anyway. He was on NBC for a while on the radio too. For a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, great deceptive run also from Pichon to pull everybody out. And that time, Eileen got up the middle of the field. We're talking about that central defending area. Philly's getting her chances now. And uh, Weber is keeping them in this ball game. They're, they're, they're easily could be a 3 0 score right now. So here they come. Boy, the, the girls from China can really pull off some magic. It's a very good scheming out of them. There's Lee Lane on the ball. She's had a tough year. Two assists last year, 10 goals and two assists. But showing some brilliance there coming in off the bench. And Clemens has caused some uh, havoc since she's come into the match as well with a couple of shots on goal. Really China hope for a corner here. And there's Clemens with some room. Left foot across the box. Headed away by New York. Some great dribbling moves by Lou Eileen that time. She can't take that extra touch when Tiffany Milbert is around. And there's Milbert with it now. Look at, her, look at her hips throwing the fake, sending people left, making them go right. Tremendous balance and control. And she gives it away and then makes a run trying to get it back. Perriman collides heads. Great job from Teej. And that, that was uh, take one for the team time. Ouch. Look at Benson. Quick feet. Slows the ball down. They're going to go back and hold on to it. And it makes sense that uh, the, yeah. the power dynamite on the counter. So they're not going to run right back into him. They're going to hold and try and pull him apart, which they'll be doing very well. Clemens at midfield with Rebecca McDowell, who's going all the way, replacing Tolick. And now the run. Pichon gives it and goes. Here she comes again. And Weber with another save. Point blank. What a great save by Weber this time with her feet. Pichon clearly in from Lee Hong. She's going to lose. You're going to have to throw some deception. You're going to have to put some moves on Weber tonight. Man, has she had the angles covered. Her timing has been razor sharp. Great point, Lou. She got off her line real quick and shut that down because she knew it was now or never. She did it. Mitz now into the attack zone. High ball, deep over the line. Everybody take a breather. And not a good cross by Clemens, but doing very well to get out wide. And you can see again as Mitz plays this ball outside. And then Clemens plays it back. Nice build up out of the midfield. Watch this give and go. Talk about a wall pass. Lee Hong is in. She's beating everybody, but not Weber. Fourth time tonight that Lee Hong has been on the money to Pichon. Look at this pass. Yeah, we talked about how they exploited that left wing. See, now you're going you're gonna to need some deception. What do you do? Dribble away. Right, here she goes again. Pichon scores it this time. It's in the back of the net for Philadelphia. The build-up for 
was fabulous. Four excellent chances for the league's leading goal scorer before she finally beat Saskia Weber. And watch this ball chipped in. Some great wing play. She gets behind the defender. And again, she takes a first time hit. That time, no deception. She just got the step. Again, yes, you give it to me into this passing angle here, and she gets onto it. Route one, 95, lower left-hand corner. Weber playing a stellar game, unable to stop that. Harris, New York on the counterattack. Bomb guard moving right in. And finally, the charge defense stops celebrating long enough. New York still pressuring. And here's where they could become vulnerable. We remember Abby Wambach scoring right after Kelly Smith had scored her goal that time against Washington. So again, Benson takes an extra second but coughs it up. That's uh, Lawler with it. Pichon's 11th goal and the assist, Jim, for a fourth consecutive game to Heather Mitz. Brilliant vision from Heather Mitz. And the consistency of overlapping out of the back. Boy, this woman with the ball right now may not have a point in this game, but what a soccer game she's played. Chow yeah. Lee Hong. Yeah, she has been a bit of the midfield general for them tonight. And there they go again. You see, if you make one mistake, you see the way she'll track you down. One mistake, she'll pounce. I'm right. talking about Pichon, number 11. Right there. She's the midnight rider. And Greg Allman, the Allman brothers, get behind that defense. And of course, one of the things that the power can't do, they can't throw. They played such a good game. This is where they've had troubles in the past. They can't panic here. They need to get the ball out of the box and settle down. Pardon me, that was the 10th goal of the season for number 11, Pichon. Now there's a ball behind the defense and it's off the post. And the photo, it's another goal. It's in the back of the net for Philadelphia. Pichon, she now has 11 goals. <laughs> Look at that dance going on out there. They're dancing on the same river. I didn't need to correct myself. She has 11 goals. And what a great head ball off the crossbar. A left-footed volley from about eight yards out. But that's a world-class volley. What, uh, watch the composure. The ball's knocked in. I believe that's Heather Mitz. Or now Clemens gets it off the crossbar. Hello. Yes, look at that. She takes a step back. Ravia trying to shut her down. Unable to do it. Look at that smile on that face. Lee Hong starting to attack. I believe that's that Andy Clemens. Yep. Clemens knife off the crossbar. Oh, man. Pete Show talking you. about a side volley of side kicks. <laughs> what that. is that there? I don't know. That's something she brought with her from France, I think. But uh, we'll take it here in Philadelphia. By the way, she is the French National Female Athlete of the Year. Marinette Pichon, welcome to the USA. And I saw her sharing a laugh with Lou Eileen. What in the world could they have said to each other? Because Marinette <laughs> speaks purely French. Well, they both Lou go to Villanova for English lessons, so maybe there's a breakthrough right out of the field. They're in the first semester. Of, uh, they need about 16 each, but boy, Marker, they play. They say Mark Recorian, the coach, has got to be terribly happy with his team. I tell you, the power has thrown everything at them that they could. Weber's played fantastic. Laura, Milbert, uh, Jan, uh, Ronnie Fair. Uh, this game is not over yet. They, they, this is a new power team, but I have to say, the charge for a step ahead of everybody. There's Charlie Castilli only in his second game. He finally had eight days to prepare for this game, and it has shown. That's Pichon's fourth two-goal game of the year. Wow. And Mitz scores an assist in her last four games now. Heather Mitz making the name for herself. Rebecca McDowell on the field spread pretty well for Philadelphia now as we click into the final ten minutes or so. And this has been a great game of soccer, as Tony Tsujiko was talking with us. And here comes New York on the counter, looking for Milbert up front. Ball, if he two plays there, unfortunately couldn't chip that ball high enough to get Milbert, she would have been gone. But that, again, that back four has held strong yes, all night does. long. Boy, Philadelphia's speed, raw speed up front, Jimmy, has really become their trademark. And with the injection of uh, Mandy Clemens onto the field, the right midfield, uh, yeah, she really, he said it'd be instant offense when she came out here. Yep. Really and Lou Eileen has made some very heady veteran offensive plays also. Yeah, but I must say that Benson and Eileen and uh, a couple of other players have set the ball down like this. They weren't able to do this in the first half. I mean, the, the, the power had their number. They, they were forcing them uh, to give the ball up, and if you took an extra touch, they stole it. Are you fan enough? Pick up a charge fan pack. You pick the games. You get the best discounts by calling 215-467-GOAL. 
if you're fan enough. You know, Jim, what you were point you were trying to make there, I think the average person who's just getting accustomed to game of soccer probably doesn't understand the importance of that subtlety uh, of the game. We see the breakouts by Pichon, et cetera, et cetera. We don't understand the value of settling the ball on the backside. Well, you know, we all sports are the same. You know, you go to that four corner. Sometimes you want to slow the ball down if it was basketball. And there are times when you do that in, in professional soccer, men's and women's soccer, you slow it down a little bit to kind of lull the other team into a bit of false security. There are a lot of moves and counter moves that way. There are other times when you want to go ahead and counterattack. And, uh, you know, basketball, that's a fast break. And it's, it's not a big mystery. A lot of people try and make it a big mystery. It's not. All right, let me, let me uh, do this. Uh, football, you run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. And now all of a sudden you fake the run throw the long ball. Sure, just think about the corner kicks. They hit about five or six of them in the near post. Then finally they knock one to the far post and they almost score on it. So. Uh, wonderful uh, sports analogies here and both some great soccer from the best in the w best women's league in the world. Now it's important because we're still learning this game and uh, that's part of our function here. Uh, I remember when hockey first came uh, to Philadelphia, professional hockey, uh, the great announcer Gene Hart, part of his uh, mandate was to teach the people who watch what the game is all about, what the heck that uh, blue line thing was and offsides and uh, icing it. Well, you, you know, you hit it from two angles, you hit it from that angle, and then if you just take the time and just watch, the, as we talked about, the chess game that goes on for 90 minutes, there's the best team offense. Carolina, 2.1 goals, Philly, 1.9, and Boston, 1.7. And there they are, 1 and 2 in the standings uh, in both categories, and 1 and 2 in the standings in overall record. There's Jia Li Hong. She's got a great connection now with Marinette Pichon, who was uh, for the second game in a row here at Villanova, within eight days of each other, scored twice in a match. Well, Tonight she has both goals. I was going to say, the, the, the one goal was just phenomenal, and then she backed up like a matador yeah. to, to back up to get time to volley it, and then she cracked it with left foot. Most people hit that over, and you're hitting Jumbo Elliott or, or Marty right. Lagori on the wall here right. at Villanova on, the, on the, you know, the honorary wall there. There's a uh, great composure, like Milbrit, great body control. There's Perriman breaking in, but you see Pete, is that, no, the Jolly Hong all the way back uh, defensively. They kind of let Pichon stay on this side of the uh, of, of the midfield, along the defensive back line, kind of hang back there and break it through. Blue Eileen keeping it in along the sidelines. Here's where they got to be careful. Oh, look at that ball. Here's where the, the charge has to be careful, though. You don't want to take extra touches. Someone ends up uh, taking you out, and you, you go out for the season right now. Well, we talked about Pichon leading the league in goals scored, and she does that and builds on that with 11 now, but now she has tied... Uh, Mildred for the, and there she is again, ball hopping. She has now tied Mildred for the overall league lead in total point score. Oh, that's just amazing. That's with just one assist. I know, she, she has really stepped up big time, as, as well as the rest of the team. And so when Kelly Smith went down, and it's, just, it's hard to believe that Kelly Smith was on the field with all of these players, and, he, and she had Lee Hong as well as uh, Pinchon. <laughs> Blue Eileen and all those other targets to play to. Tune in to our national carrier, PAX TV, every Saturday at 4 to catch WUSA's national game of the week. Check your local listings for PAX TV's channel position in your region. Played for Corey and had to rework his offense again, Jim, with a loss to Smith, and uh, he's kind of done it again. Uh, it's a superior tactician. Eric Pierman got at least one nutmeg out of that, but superior tactician and a guy who does know how to interchange all the talent that he, that he has in the field, but the players have such a great attitude. They're willing to listen and uh, give it take. And you can see uh, Charlie DeSilly has got the ear of, of the charge, too. They, they've played excellent soccer tonight. Yeah, they have. There's a long ball in, and there's that defensive back four for Philly swapping away. There's a rare shot. It's in the goal. New York has scored. A deep shot from a severe angle. Krista Davy cracks it into the back of the net in the far post. Past Melissa Moore. And New York right back into this game in the 86th minute at 2-1. to one. That's a big-time goal by Krista Davy. And we talked about how she scored the tying goal in the late going against Atlanta. Watch this now. She's going to get a touch on it. And she's going to volley it. That's a world-class goal. And that goes in the lower right-hand corner. What a great goal. Here again, yeah. looking at a volley right out of the air. Woo. Moore is really doing everything she could to get to it. Could not get there. How about that? Krista about Davey. 21 yards out. She played with the Washington Freedom last year. And there's a ball out in front, and it's offside. So we would have had a tie game. And that flag is up, and you can see uh, the, the coaches from the power pacing the sidelines. 
Bud Vasily wanting to have a word with the assistant ref and then a fourth official down there. He'd be the judge here. Let's see when the ball's played. I don't know. That looked like she may have been on that time. Oh, boy. Cracks that was left James court. breaking in, yeah. Milbert gets the assist on the goal to Davies, so Milbert goes right back into the league lead in total scoring. Yeah, we'll have to take a look at that again later on, possibly, because uh, that was very close. Boy, they've got a lot of hop in their step all of a sudden. Here comes New York. These last five minutes will be very exciting. A 2-1 game. Philadelphia trying to hold on for another win on their home field. But New York Power playing one of their best games of the season. Right back in it on the goal from Davy. Now Stephanie Milbert having a couple words with system referee and Charlie Vasily talking there. Again, now I don't know if that time it looked like Tiffany Milbert may have came back from an onside position to get onside, which you can't do. But off your ball. That goal that James called, uh, that, that was close now. Again, we don't have the same angle that the system referees have from up here. So. Five times the power is the whistle for offsides, twice for Philadelphia. Keyshawn with a lead down the right side for Mitz, who pops it up and gets it back. Deep shot will sail high and wide by Lori Fair. 88 minutes. We'll play a little extra, I would imagine. 2-1. Philadelphia in a wild second half. We were scoreless. 70 minutes into this affair. Before Pichon scored two in a row for Philadelphia. Charlie Hahn with plenty of room on the left again. She'll wind it up. The crack it. Oh, Weber was off balance but made the save. Oh, what a phenomenal save from Weber. She's going the wrong way. She's going to the far post. She ends up <laughs> smiling away there and saving it with the right hand. What a game. There again, Lee Hong again, dangerous all night down the left wing. Tries to go at it herself. Woo! Saskia had to reach behind her. It might have pulled her shoulder out of socket. <laughs> but made the save. She's uh, really been something in goals. Down 2-1. And there's a ball ahead. There's the power with an angle. Deep on the left side, cross to the middle. There's an open shot, no! The jam should have popped it first time like Eileen here should have done at the other end. But some great counter-attacking soccer. Krista Davey on one side, Jan, very good goal scorer. And uh, scored that uh, goal that was just called back. Just smacked the first time, but some great switching to the point of the attack on the counter from the power. There's uh, Lawler. And here's New York really pushing. And the power are not out of it oh. mathematically, but they would have to win every game all the way through to at least finish 500. But uh, there's still a possibility that they can get into the playoffs. But uh, let's see what they do here. Block is a factor now. Philadelphia out shooting them 20 to 9, but just 2 to 1 on the scoreboard. And there's a shot in the head of Moore has to drop it out of harm's way and hold on for dear life. Boy, that was popping around like in a mosh pit popcorn. She got to that far post because it looked like uh, there were a couple of headers on it. We'll play three extra minutes. We've just been notified. So a long way to go. Stay with us. Great battle going on here between Pichon and Pierce. Pichon gets away from Pierce. And no, there was a whistle. The crowd is really jazzed, and every one of the 6,400 has stayed on to the end here. And it's a wild finish. Jen Benson. Strong game defensively as usual for number six. Just lays it across for McDowell. Now back for Benson. Benson letting, uh, rather New York, letting Philly chew up some clock. Bonnie Fair penned in. New York keeps it in. Benson flips it down for McDowell. Here's Fair breaking in. Has some room, shoots for the far corner. Piece hat trick. It's the natural. It's the hat trick. Three goals in the second half for Marinette Pichon, bidding to be on the player of the month for July as well. What a brilliant ball from Lori Fair. Whoever unable to do anything because it had a bend on, a whip, bend away from the keeper as it came across. And she can, she can, she can put some ice on him later, but she ran in onto it at the far post here. Watch the great timing between Fair and Pete Sean as she arrived on the wow. half volley. Wow! Ball popped up off the turf. That's a hard one to score too. Watch the timing. Bing. Boom. Oh, 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 man. Is she on fire? The hat trick. 
and that right behind the defense there, Ronnie Fair could not do anything about it. Lori Fair put the ball right behind her twin sister, unfortunately. And Pichon goes back into the league lead in scoring. We've had three changes of the league lead in scoring tonight here on this turf in Philadelphia. Now New York trying to close the women. Why was right on by Perriman? And Moore gobbles it up. And you can see Milford and Perriman fighting to the end right in the box. There's some good service from Davey down the wing. Now here comes Eileen the other way down the left wing. Whoops. Now listen, Jim, in two games, last two charge games here, and they're both shaping up as 3-1 wins, Marinette Pichon has scored five of the six charge goals. It's just amazing. And now has scored the only other hat trick this year other than the one by Mildred. Breaking a lot of records. I wonder if they're writing and talking about her back in France. I wonder if they're aware. Of I'm sure they are because the French men's national team didn't score a goal in the World Cup. Yeah, that's so they right. got to be talking about it. And now get this. I talked about uh, five of six scores. That one was labeled and went high and over the crossbar just left by Davy. Oh, Jans almost had a goal there. Jans, excuse me. Keyshawn has scored not just five of six, but 11 of the last 14 charge goals. There's Jans, though. Watch this. It just misses the upper left-hand corner. It starts to drop. Oh, boy, was that close. And as you just said, this is just astounding what Keyshawn has achieved. Yeah, I'd like to see some statistical comparisons on that. 11 of the team's last 14 goals, and most of them since Kelly Smith went down with a torn ligament. There it is! There's the whistle in Philadelphia in a super, super match of uh, aggressive teams tonight. New York trying to bounce up off the turf. They gave it everything. Saskia Weber, I'm going to take her out for a, a, a dinner afterwards. But the Philadelphia charge behind three goals by Marinette Pichon. Three to one winners tonight. And they go back into a tie for first place. What a clinic on finishing that we usually get from Milbert. She'll be back. She's getting called up with U.S. dancing. But Mitch getting another uh, assist on the day. A hat trick from Pichon. Uh, a way, uh, how to finish in the box by Pichon. And she just runs off the ball. Her timing is immaculate. And of course, all the other players around her, uh, not a selfish uh, bunch, as you can see from the charge. Credit to Krikorian yeah. and how they play. Philly soccer, as he talked about, building slowly out of the back taking their time, and when they get people in advanced positions in their attacking third, not just blind serves. Alain Hurley owns a Hyundai Elantra. I researched it on the internet. There was no comparison. The competition can't match the freedom of America's best warranty. The warranty for the Elantra was the best out there. It also has a long list of features, including front and side airbags. It's the only car in its class that has them standard. The gas mileage is excellent. It's a great value for the money. The Hyundai Elantra. Okay.